On today's edition of What's Going On With Shipping, the Empire State 7 has arrived. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So big news across state maritime academies in the United States, principally the State University of New York Maritime College, my alma mater, class of 89, is receiving its brand new training ship, the Empire State 7. I personally sailed on Empire State 5, but that indicates how old I am. Empire State 7 is new, however, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which it's a part of a class of five vessels that will equip five of the six state maritime academies with new training ships. The ships will be used to take cadets out on their summer sea terms to get the required training they need to get their merchant marine licenses, but also they have a mission of humanitarian relief and emergency aid. They can be used at times of hurricanes and natural disasters, house emergency personnel on board, and be deployed rapidly from around the United States, three on the East Coast, one on the Gulf Coast, one on the Pacific Coast, to wherever they're needed. So I want to talk a little bit about this vessel and why it's so important. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to be alerted about new videos as they come out. So here is the arrival of Empire State 7 in New York. Uh, the State University of New York Maritime College is located at Fort Schuyler in the Bronx. If you drive over to the Throgs Neck Bridge, that's those trolls underneath you. That is the school I went to. And you can see it's a beautiful September day in New York for the arrival of the vessel. Just, just perfect. It was raining like crazy when it happened. This article from uh, Mike Schuller, SUNY Maritime College, welcomed the arrival of Empire State 7, marking a new era of training for the nation's future merchant mariners. The ship is part of a five government-owned national security multi-mission vessels, NSMVs. They really need a better acronym than that. It's kind of a mouthful dual purpose, world-class training platform, and assist with humanitarian disasters. Now, the ship was delivered to the U.S. Maritime Administration by Philly Shipyard in Philadelphia. They are building all five of these vessels, and then they're transitioning to build three container ships for Matson. Uh, Philly Shipyard was picked to construct all the vessels by tote under a innovative vessel construction manager. So one of the really novel things that happened with the construction of this vessel is the U.S. Mar uh, Maritime Administration did not contract with Philly Shipyard to build the ship. Instead, they went to Tote. Tote is a ship operator. They operate ships uh, from the U.S. to Puerto Rico and also from the U.S. to Alaska. They went with Tote. Tote, in turn, designed the vessel and then went to Philly Shipyard. It was commercialized. They basically took this out of the hands of the government, which could be laborious and slow, put it in the hands of a commercial ship operating company, a commercial shipyard, Philadelphia Shipyard is, is the old Philadelphia Navy Yard. And what they've produced is a vessel pretty much on time. It's a little late coming in, but not too much. And on budget, about within 1% of the estimated budget. So this is really novel. And there are four more of these vessels on the way. So I show you some images of the vessel coming in. It's kind of a big, huge, blocky vessel. It has a little bit of a Borg uh, kind of look to it. Uh, this is Fort Schuyler right here. This is where I went to school. There is the Throgs Neck Bridge. So they're coming in through Long Island Sound into the area. Here they are off the pier. And great interior view, some interior views. This is the bridge. I will have a comment about this bridge console. Uh, John Conrad over at G Captain had the same comment I did. This is looks great, this massive bridge console. <laughs> the problem with a bridge console like this is you got to walk all the way around it to get to a window. Usually you have some pass-throughs so you can get to the windows from behind the console. It's, it's either you're leaping over the console or you're, you're running around from behind it. Uh, usually you have uh, it segregated out. Uh, mess area, uh, big huge uh, dining area in the galley. Uh, big vessel. Obviously, the rain is pouring down, man. Look at the amount of water. <laughs> it's raining off the vessel as it comes in. There was a little bit of debate when this vessel was first being built. Uh, Marad wanted to register all the vessels in Norfolk, Virginia, not where they were based. That created a little bit of a problem. Eventually, they got it registered into New York. So this is the Marad Maritime Administration site. Here's the agreement with the Maritime Academies and their overview. Uh, the ships are going to five of the six state academies so california maine massachusetts new york and texas will get one great lakes will not because great lakes is up on the great lakes it's in michigan they will probably get a replacement vessel of some kind 
but a vessel the size of Empire State 7 would be a bit much for the school, though I do think they do need a new training ship. This is the information packet on the National Security Multi-Mission Vessel. Really shows you the timeline of the vessel coming on, um, on birth back in 2017 when it was authorized, 2019 when Marad selected Tote to do the vessel construction, 2010 Dote, uh, Tote selects Philly Shipyard to do it, 2021 Marad authorized construction of the third and fourth vessel. The first two had been back in 2019. 2013, the first vessel delivered for assignment to SUNY Maritime. Plans are for Mass Maritime to get their vessel in 2024. And then the remaining vessels will go out to assignment, uh, the third, fourth, and fifth going to Maine, Texas, and then finally California. The ships are, again, impressive. They are maybe not the most beautiful design, very boxy. But again, this is kind of, if you look at modern cruise ships, look at a Norwegian cruise line, for example, extremely boxy, perhaps not the most beautiful looking ship in the world. But again, functionality, that's what you're trying to get from this vessel. You are not trying to recreate the Normandy or the Queen Mary. <laughs> and let's be clear, they didn't with these vessels. So this is the site on the NSMV. It talks a little bit about it, why they did it, uh, a little background on it. And one of the big things they talk about quite here is the emergency preparedness role for it. The ship features some very unique things, including a helipad on the stern. Uh, it also has roll-on, roll-off facilities. There's a large kind of open bay area with side port ramps so you can bring vehicles on and off. You can transition this vessel over to house emergency workers. You can even outfit it as a, a mini hospital ship. And I'm really surprised, I've talked about this a lot, why the U.S. Navy is not looking at this vessel right now for conversion into a hospital ship. You know, they're building five of these, while six and seven could be replacement hospital ships for the mercy and the comfort. You can convert these vessels into tenders. They can replace the, replace the aviation logistics support ships right in Curtis, which are over 50 years old. They can become destroyer tenders, submarine tenders. These vessels are being built. They may not be ideal, 100% what you want, but you're getting 80% probably in these vessels. Uh, they also talk about the economic b benefits here, how they promote construction in the United States being built at Philly Shipyard. Uh, and more importantly, they will be used throughout the United States and become symbols of really a rekindling of the U.S. Merch Marine. John Conrad, in a post over on Twitter, made this point quite extensively. The other element here is the behind the scenes, what was done to get these vessels built. The state maritime uh, academies put together a consortium to basically lobby for this, and it was an effective lobbying program. Uh, using alumni, using their influence, they were able to put together a program to get it. Matter of fact, uh, President Mike Alfoltis, the president of SUNY Maritime, has announced now that the ship has arrived, he's going to be retiring. He achieved his goal of bringing in a new training ship. But you'll see here on this graph, just this year, 120,000 dollars has been reported as part of the lobbying effort of the state maritime academies that is down from where it was at almost two million dollars for quite a long time from 2017 to 2022 that was a concentrated effort by the state maritime academies to get these vessels built understand the ship that was being used at SUNY Maritime, Empire State 6, was over 50 years old. And there was a bit of an issue with Empire State 6 and the transition to Empire State 7. They had hoped to have the 7 on berth and out this summer for the summer sea term. And they were so confident of this that they let the 6 be dragged off to Brownsville, Texas to be scrapped. Well, 7 is just arriving now. Summer sea term is over. So they had to make a kind of a haphazard deal. They sent a lot of their cadets onto other training ships and they're probably working on a winter uh, cruise for this vessel to get the last of the merchant mariners, the cadets at SUNY Maritime train. So it wasn't exactly a smooth transition, but again, this ship is much better on time than if you look at some of the other programs of shipbuilding, principally government ones, Navy contracts, Coast Guard contracts. Definitely the Empire State 7 is doing much better. Finally, just a few more comments from that article from Mike Schuller. 
Rear Admiral Michael Foltis says this, this state-of-the-art training ship will provide our cadets the most advanced technology in the shipping and maritime industry and ensure they are prepared to operate and maintain vessels as licensed deck, deck officers and engineers. We appreciate the National Security Multi-Mission Vessel Program bipartisan support of the state maritime academies. It goes back to the governor and the chancellor of SUNY. Uh, and again, these ships are going to be spread out. Here's the estimated delivery times with mass getting theirs in 2024 with all the vessels being delivered to Maine, Texas, and California by 2026. There will be an official welcoming on Friday today for the ship at SUNY Maritime. And I think this is a great news. I think this is a big boon for U.S. shipbuilding. I think this is great for SUNY Maritime College, my alma mater. I do have a question about I was not invited to any of this. I have a pretty good vocal uh, medium here to get information out to people. Uh, they had a christening ceremony at Philly. That was pretty low key. Uh, not a lot of news was brought there. Even the major news media outlets weren't brought in for that. Even the maritime outlets weren't brought in for that. And now on Friday, this huge welcoming ceremony and I'm not gonna be there, but that's all right. I'll be down at the U.S. Naval Academy at the McMullen Naval History Symposium. So you'll have this video, and I'm sure they'll do some sort of press thing for it, and I'll try to find it and get it out to you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You can hit the super thanks button down below, or head over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly patron subscriber. It is my Patreon supporters and those of you who subscribe to this channel that help me embark and go to conferences like I'm at, at the McMullen Naval History Symposium to present my paper on six oilers. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.